Today we're taking a boat trip to an island which you're not supposed to walk on, but we're gonna walk on it. Okay, so we're on the boat and we're headed towards Chrissy Island, which is under Natura 2000, which means that it's not supposed to be inhabited. So we're actually not allowed to go on the island, but we are going to kind of jump off the boat, swim and get some fun r and &R. Hopefully, if there's not a lot of wind, I'm gonna do some drone flying around here. So what I will try to show you guys in this video is well, how much work there actually is in color grading and putting a video together with these different image profiles. Now I'm usually struggling with which picture profile to actually use because sometimes I don't have time to do an extensive color grade. And personally, I'm not a color colorist or color gradist. So basically, I just want to have the videos you know, looking good and not spend too much time on color grading. This is why it's really important for me to actually get a good looking shot straight out of the camera. Now, if I want to spend some time on color grading, I use the log image profiles because they just offer a higher dynamic range and they're just so much fun to work with. I mean, if you expose them correctly, it's kind of hard to get things wrong. But if you're using a standard internal camera profile that your camera offers, now you're, you're very quickly overexposed or underexposed. The highlights are typically blown out or maybe the shadows are a little bit too dark. So it's always kind of a battle, kind of a struggle which picture profile to use. So throughout this video, I was testing out different image profiles for the camera. Now we need to go back to the editing room and see which one works the best and how much work you have to put in for each individual image profile. Thank you for the nice boat trip. Bye bye. Good. Ciao. Okay, I'll be showing you how you can color grade four different picture profiles in DaVinci Resolve. Now, you can do pretty much the similar thing in Final Cut or Premiere Pro. I'm using DaVinci Resolve because first of all, it's free, and second of all, it's a really powerful color grading tool. Now, the four video clips that I have here are all of the same scene, but they are different picture profiles. Now, I'm using a Sony camera, which means that I have specific S-Log gamma curve image profiles. If you're using a Canon, you have C-Log gamma curves, and if you're using a Panasonic, you have V log and F log for Fuji and so on. So the first clip is basically just a standard straight out of the camera look. I was actually using the Cine 2 picture profile for this one, but it's kind of a standard, you know, ready to use straight out of the camera shot. The second one is using S log 2, which is kind of a good logarithmic gamma curve profile for an 8-bit camera because this camera only records 8-bit colors for video. So this is S log 2, which you can see it's quite flat and quite desaturated. Now the third one is actually S log 3. This one is very aggressive and is really meant to be used with 8-bit recordings. Personally, I don't even know why this is on a Sony Alpha 7 III, which only records 8-bit colors, but I mean, we have it here and sometimes you can make it work really well. The problem is that 8 bits is just not enough colors for such an aggressive stretching apart and contrast adding and saturation adding. And finally, I have the hybrid log gamma or HLG, actually HLG3, and the color space for this one was BT2020. For S log 3, the color space was S gamma 3 cine, for S log 2 was just S gamma, and for this one, it, I think it's just Rex 709. So let's go into the color grade, and I'll show you how you can actually color grade this in a very simple way. So the first one is the straight out of the camera look. Now here there's actually not much to do. I can maybe just offset it a little bit lower to bring it a little bit darker. Maybe 
play a little bit with the highlights and with the shadows and this is pretty much ready to use straight out of the camera so typically you don't need to color grade this or you just need to maybe adjust the highlights and the shadows a little bit so that's all that it takes for a straight out of the camera look the second clip is S-Log2. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier because first we need to transform the color space and the gamma curve, the brightness or the contrast curve from this logarithmic state into a linear state. So here I will use under the effects, I already have um, under the favorites uh, my color space transform. You can find this by just searching the color and here we have color space transform. So I'm gonna drop this right in as the first node. Now, DaVinci Resolve works with nodes. It's very similar to Premiere Pro, which uses layers only. Here we have one node after the other, and in Premiere Pro we have one layer on top of the other. So it's kind of the same thing. So this would be my transform, but I need to set the correct parameter. So my input color space needs to be the one that I was using as gamut, and my input gamma curve is S-Log2. For the export, I'm going to use just a standard Rec 709, which is kind of the same as sRGB. And here you can see now the video clip being corrected. So this was the before and this was the after. Now, of course, you can always tweak this, but the important thing to know with these types of edits is that if you want to tweak the shadows and the highlights, you should always do this before the color space transform. So everything that you mess up with your exposure should be corrected before the color space. So let's do this right now. So Shift S to bring another node before this one. And now I can play with the highlights a little bit. Tone down the highlights, maybe lift up the shadows, and this maybe add in a little bit of a contrast. Now everything that you're going to apply as a look, as a style, I typically apply this after the color space. So if I Alt S another node, so here is where I would um, maybe lift up the shadows a little bit, give it that kind of more cinematic, flat, shadowed look, something like this. And then afterwards, very necessary, you should always add a little bit of sharpness, like I'm doing right here. Now for the third clip, this is S-Log3. So the approach is very similar as S-Log2, you just need to change the color space differently. So I'm just going to copy the settings from this clip, so middle mouse button click from the clip before, and it copies the settings, but under the color space transform, of course, I need to select the S-Gamma3 Cine, and S-Log3. Now, because this captures a lot more information, I don't need to tone down the highlights and lift up the shadows as much. So basically, I have now a very similar look with a little bit higher dynamic range and also a little bit more noise in the shadowy areas, which you can see right over here. Also, you can notice the colors falling apart. The reds and the greens kind of being separated where with S-Log2 it's a little bit better. And with the original clip exported from the camera, you can see that you know the colors are really, really nice. So the original file, you can see there's practically no noise over here. S-Log2 has a little bit of noise and a little bit of color separation. S-Log3 has a lot more noise and a lot more color separation. So now finally we come to the HLG. Now I have to admit I'm not very used to color grading HLG clips. Now typically HLG comes out from the camera actually looking quite okay. You just need to tweak a little bit of the shadows, the highlights, the contrast, maybe the colors. But you only need to transform the color space from the BT2020 into Rec 709. So take my color space transform effect put this over here and then choose the correct input color space which was the BT2020 define it rec 2020 it's this guy over here my input is rec 709 and my output is rec 709 as well because the gamma is actually a hybrid log gamma it's not a logarithmically transformed you know contrast and brightness curve function it's just kind of flattened out and not really affected that much so this is the reason why i only need to transform the color space now of course i can do my highlights and shadows adjustments over here as well. And then afterwards, Alt S, I can just basically copy the look or the style from the previous clip and then maybe add a little bit of sharpening in the end. So now we have all clips that well, of course look a little bit differently, but that's how you basically approach it. This is the simplest way of actually color grading or, or color correcting your video files. Of course, you can go crazy with the highlight and the shadow colors, making that kind of orange and teal look, which I'm not actually really a fan of because that's actually reserved for Hollywood cinema, not for YouTube. At least that's my opinion. This is why you almost never see this in my YouTube videos. 
So that's it, this is how four different picture profiles look and how you can very easily approach them and color grade them in DaVinci Resolve. You don't need to have the paid version to do this, so you can get DaVinci Resolve beta for free from the internet and you can do what I did over here. So thanks for watching, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button and if you have any questions or comments, leave that down in the questions and comments area. So, and I will leave you guys with this video over here if you wanna stay on the channel. Bye bye.